Chapter 20. The future is always brighter. Perched high in the vast skyscraper city, atop the dense jungle of towering buildings below, stood the largest mansion in New York. The luxury mansion remained isolated from the city below, with a long outer fence guarded by androids. Kyle led everyone to the home, away from the packed streets and busy skyways. Allie gazed up at the mansion as they approached. The sleek windows around the exterior walls reflected the evening skylight, outlining the lavish, rounded design and illuminating the long driveway leading to the front entrance. Kyle stopped along the road leading up to the mansion, hiding behind the end of the low wall nearing the top of the building. The group came to a stop behind him and looked over the wall. Sheesh, does this place have its own area code? Asked Zip. How did you ever manage to escape from here, Kyle? This place looks more heavily guarded than Alcatraz. Said Teach, noticing the vast number of android guards patrolling the perimeter and front gate. I was against the Genas. That was before her brother barged in, of course. They've definitely increased the number of guards since I've left. I don't blame them. I'd want to keep you out of my house, too. Replied Teach. The group could see the parade of guests arriving in sleek limousines and luxury cars at the main gate. The androids checked the faces of the passengers in each car before allowing them inside. Why doesn't Gina just let us in, rather than making us sneak in? Asked Allie, afraid their plan might not work. I asked her when I messaged her. Marcus cracked down on her ability to admit guests. Not that it's my fault or anything. Replied Kyle, watching the guests greet one another at the front door. Sim glanced down at his communicator. They still had five hours and 14 minutes left. All right, let's hurry this up. I want to get out of here so we can find our friend and go home. After you. Teach said as he gestured for Sim and Allie to lead the way. Sim moved past him and headed further up the street. The others all followed his lead as Allie looked down at her side to make sure the dog was still with her. Sure enough, her lost companion remained bound to her side. If this doesn't work, everyone make a break for it in opposite directions and meet back at the square. If anyone gets caught, you're on your own. The android guards permitted a car to enter, then waved for another to approach. Sim felt intimidated by the android's steely blue eyes. He steadied his nerves and cleared his throat. Standing four feet away, he grunted to the android standing watch while the other continued to inspect the cars. Good evening, sir or madame. How may I assist you this evening? Said the android. Let us pass. Said Sim in a stern voice. I'm sorry, do you have a reservation? Yes, me and my associates. The android's eyes flared and changed colors to a deep red as it began to scan him from the head down. Identity unknown. Requesting extensive search. Zip, Twig, Teach, and Kyle all stood ready to run away. Sam and Allie stood their ground. Extensive search complete. Unknown error. Identity unknown. No action authorized. Replied the android. Teach and the others heaved a joined sigh of relief. Sim and Allie walked casually past the android as it stood idly. As the others passed, they all looked away from the artificial guard while covering their faces with their hands, making sure to keep their distance in the hope they wouldn't be stopped. One by one, all four of them passed, following Sim and Allie. The android didn't look at them as it continued to stand watch while the other checked the cars. With the android guards well behind them, the group walked up to the driveway to the mansion with a new confidence in their step. <laughs> Those things really are as dumb as they look, laughed Zip. The others all turned to silence him with a loud shh. All right, we did our part. Now you do yours, said Sim, stopping behind the hedges along the driveway to face Teach. Where is she, Kyle? Kyle looked down at the phone screen projected onto his wrist from his watch. Okay, she'll meet you out back of the kitchen, south side of the house. He replied, pointing to the far corner of the house, away from the front. Teach extended his hand again for Sim and Allie to shake, with a satisfied grin on his face. We'll take it from here. You guys go find your friend. Allie shook his hand. Thanks for all the help, Teach. And, no offense, but I hope we never run into you guys again. Trouble seems to follow you everywhere you go. Teach chuckled. <laughs> I could say the same about you two. Hey, thanks for saving my ass, said Kyle shaking Sim and Allie's hands. Hey, we saved yours, you saved mine. Just glad we could return the favor. We couldn't just let you die there. Otherwise, we'd be no better than those heartless tin men, said Teach. All right, goodbyes are over. Can we go now? We need to hurry this up before someone sees us, whispered Twig. 
With their final goodbyes behind them, Sim, Allie, and their lost companion broke away from their four misfit friends. They began climbing up the grassy hill towards the backside of the mansion. Sim looked back to make sure the four young men had made it into the party. He was surprised to see no one stop them, despite their dirty and rugged appearance. Sim's communicator beeped with a new message. You find who you're looking for yet, kid? Asked Otto over the speaker. Tell them to hurry up. The food's getting cold, said Vila. Why doesn't Leo just use a bed upstairs? Merrick began to ask faintly in the background before the message ended. Not yet, but we have a promising lead. Should be back soon. Hopefully. Sim replied. He sent the message with a quick tap on the screen. What's with all that we stuff? I was the one who saved Kyle earlier. You just stood there. Allie grumbled. It was my plan, though. Sim replied. Allie rolled her eyes. Around the back of the mansion, Allie and Sim could see a curly-haired young woman in a purple evening dress waiting outside near the large swimming pool. You guys Kyle's friends? Asked the young woman, looking eager to get back inside. Yeah, are you Gina? Allie asked politely. Who else? Now come on, we'll need to hurry. I have to get back to the party before my brother notices I'm gone. Gina waved them inside. Sim and Allie hurried over to Gina with their dog trotting along after them. Gina looked down at the dog. Is that dog yours? Replied Gina to Allie. No, but we're looking for his owner. Sorry if he's a bother. No, no, he's fine. Just keep him close. My brother hates dogs. I'm Allie, by the way, and this is Sam. A pleasure. Now hurry. Said Gina, opening the back door. Sim and Allie entered the main kitchen through the back door, only to be struck by the exotic smell of fine food filling their noses. The chefs hurried around the kitchen hollering at one another, frantically working to prepare the evening's meal, busy and unaware of Sim and Allie's presence. Gina closed the back door behind them and waved for Sim and Allie to follow her. Allie nudged the lost dog along through the kitchen, trying her best to prevent him from breaking away and eating the fine food on the counters. How did you guys get past the guards out front? Asked Gina as they approached another doorway. I wish I could explain, but it's a rather complicated story. Said Sim. Exiting the busy kitchen, Sim and Allie were all at once taken aback by the sheer size of the enormous ballroom ahead of them. The vast room was decorated with polished white and green floors and embellished with white gold trim over green jade columns. Tables were spread all around the room, ornamented with fine flowers. Guests were already mingling near the entrance to the luxurious ballroom, picking away at hors d'oeuvres and champagne. This way. We'll use my father's computer in his study to look for your friend, said Gina, moving Sim and Allie along. Allie once again pushed the lost dog along to follow, sensing he had a serious urge to gorge himself on the many tasty snacks on the table nearby. Gina opened the door to the right of the ballroom entrance and led Sim and Allie down a corridor decorated with varnished wood and strange, fine art on each wall. She stopped at a set of double doors to their left and opened them quietly. Through the doors sat a clean wooden desk with bookshelves lining a room, reminding Allie of Sim and Otto's living room. With no computer visible anywhere, Allie watched Gina approach the desk, which oddly enough had no chair. Gina tapped her hands against the top of the desk. An illuminated projection appeared in the air over the desk, with a keyboard glowing on the wooden desk surface beneath it. What's your friend's name? Gina asked, leaning over to type the password into the computer. Sim shut the double doors to the study behind them and turned to look at the screen. Uh, we don't know. Allie replied. Gina looked over at her with a curious look. Uh, okay. Guess we'll start from the bottom. Guy or girl? Same thing. We don't know that either. Sim replied. Gina's eyebrows lifted toward her fine, curled bangs. She looked at Sim with a less than serious face. You guys don't know anything about the person you're looking for. Yeah, more or less. Wait, so you're looking for someone you don't even know? The person we're looking for probably was found bare-skinned in the city today with no identity on record. That's all we know. Said Allie, looking at the screen. That's very unlikely. Everyone's identity is known. There's no way your friend wouldn't be registered in the World ID system. Trust me, they're out there. All right, if it'll help prove my point. Looking for one naked, unknown person. Gina replied unenthusiastically, bending over to type into the search bar on the computer. After a brief moment of searching, 
The computer emitted an error sound as the screen read the words. No case found. Nope. Like I said, nothing. Said Gina, standing upright. Try just searching for unknown identity. Said Sim, keeping an eye out through the space between the double doors. Gina typed in the search bar and waited for the computer to show a response. The same words appeared on the screen. No case found. Nope. Same thing. Allie sighed. She looked back at Sim. Sim had the same broken-hearted expression. <sighs> what now? Allie asked. Sim looked down at his communicator. They had a little over five hours left. Well, I guess we go back out there and look. Ask around, see if anyone's found them yet. Sorry I couldn't help more, you guys. Said Gina, her lips downturned with disappointment. Why do you need to find this person so badly? Uh, it's another long story that we really don't have time to explain. Well, I'll keep checking the computer for you and message Kyle if I find anything. Thanks for the help anyway, Gina. Said Allie, offering her a hug. My pleasure. Gina replied, returning the gesture. Any friend of Kyle's is a friend of mine. I hope you guys find who it is you're looking for. Yeah, so do we. Replied Allie. Gina turned off the computer and walked around the desk back over to the door. I'll lead you guys back out through the ca- A loud gunshot echoed through the halls of the home. Allie and Gina looked at each other, their faces frozen. They could hear the sudden cry of the guests coming from down the hall. Sim glanced at both of them to confirm what he'd just heard. Oh no! Kyle! Said Gina, racing past Allie and the dog. Sim opened the double doors and ran out ahead of her. Gina flung the doors to the ballroom open. Gina, Sim, and Allie entered with haste. They looked toward the ballroom's main entrance to see Teach standing face to face with Marcus. Teach held a handgun pointed at Marcus's head, holding it with both hands. Marcus was dressed in a fine suit with a bandage on his nose from when Allie had headbutted him. He raised both his hands in the air as he stared at Teach with a steely look. The party guests had scattered, some fleeing out the front doors while others hid beneath the tables. Kyle, Twig, and Zip stood behind Teach, seemingly shocked to see a gun in their friend's hands. On the floor next to Teach lay an android, lifeless and immobile. He had clearly stolen the gun from the android and had used it to slay the robotic guard. Where's the old man, Marcus? Teach asked in a shaky voice. I don't know how you got in here, but you best turn around and leave while you can, replied Marcus with his hands still up. Teach, what the hell are you doing, man? Yelled Kyle. Shut it, Kyle! You and I have things to discuss, Marcus. Now, where's your old man? Gina looked ready to bolt and intervene. Sim grabbed her by the shoulder. Marcus! Stay here, said Sim, pulling her back. Allie wrapped her arm around her new friend to prevent her from escalating the situation any further. Allie's dog growled at Teach as it hid under the table next to Allie. Allie shushed at it to stay quiet. Where's he at, Marcus? Asked Teach, again moving even closer. He's not coming. He's busy. Is he doing what? Ruining more lives? With the loud echo of metallic feet filling the room, Teach and the others found themselves surrounded by a dozen androids, guns drawn and ready to fire. Up, 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 wait. Don't do anything. Shouted Marcus to the androids, his hands still up. He looked back at Teach with not a flicker of fear in his expression, showing his lack of worry as he now had the upper hand. Why did you come here, Teach? You burned down our home. You ruined my life and stole this city from us. Now... I want to see you pay it all back. <laughs> How? How did we ruin your life? Teach flared up and grinded his teeth. How? How? It's because of you. My mom died. Because she wasn't able to pay her medical bills. It's because of you that my father committed suicide after one of those machines of yours replaced his job and he couldn't provide for us anymore. It's because of you I was forced to live as a kid, eating trash, while you built your golden future over our heads. Teach took a deep breath and looked Marcus square in the eyes, trembling in his voice. Sim stepped slowly towards them, one slow step at a time. It's because of people like you that this city gasped for its final breath. 
with your hand wrapped around its neck. So you're gonna kill me as payback, is that it? Asked Marcus, clearly unmoved. No, I'm gonna kill the man who started it all. I'm gonna kill your father so that you and this city will know the same pain you've caused me and my friends. I want the world to know my pain as the father of its android revolution lies dead at my feet, replied Teach, pushing the gun to Marcus's throat. What's going on here? Shouted an older voice from the entrance of the ballroom at Teach's back. The crowd parted. The subtle squeaking sound of tires rolling across the polished floor entered the room. An older man rolled his way through the crowd in his electric wheelchair. He was dressed in a fine tuxedo, his greasy, silver and black hair combed to one side. Nothing, father. Marcus replied as his father rolled up next to him. Far from it, I'd say. Replied Marcus's father, Thomas McNeil. Teach turned the gun toward Thomas, still holding it with both hands. Thomas stared at him, confused. He appeared shocked at the gun barrel now pointed head level with him, with no explanation. You... this is all your fault, said Teach through his tears. Young man, I surely have no idea what you're talking about, replied Thomas with his arms firmly at the sides of his chair. You... you killed my mother with your greed. You killed my father when you put a robot in his place. You ruined my childhood. You destroyed my only home and forced me to live on the streets, said Teach, removing one hand from the gun to wipe the tears from his face with the back of his hand. Sim inched toward them, doing his best to avoid making any sudden movements. Teach, this isn't the way to solve anything. You can't blame one man or a single group of people for all your troubles, Sim said to him calmly. Why? I wasn't the one who chose this way to live. I was forced to. Young man, I may not know your life story, but I know you're right. I'm sorry for everything that has happened to you, said Thomas, rolling closer toward Teach. Teach looked down at him, clearly shocked by his apology, but still trying to remain strong in his convictions. I never intended to hurt anyone with my work. I only wanted to help. Twenty years ago, I tried to end my life feeling like an utter failure. My wife passed away and left me with two kids and a heavy weight to bear. I tried jumping off a Skyway bridge, thinking selfishly about myself and never about my children. Instead, the attempt left me broken in more ways than one. It left me permanently confined to this chair, with no one there to take care of me. I mortgaged everything I owned and started my android project trying to look after myself. I didn't want to leave my children burdened with taking care of me because of my own selfish actions. And yet, in the process of helping myself, I made a business out of helping others. I paid off my debts, gave my family a better life, and in the process believed that I can make this city a safer place for all of us. My revolution became so helpful I chose to apply to our New York City police force, our medical facilities, and even construction projects. It's only in the past few years that I've seen that my project has brought more harm to others than help. I was saving lives while destroying others. I believed I was building a brighter future. But all I've done is destroy lives. Teach stared at the man with a conflicted look. You think I'll just spare your life because you shared your story? No. I only wanted you to know that my intentions were never to destroy your life or anyone else's. I just wanted to help everyone. I know I've ruined many lives. And I'm now trying to do my best to make up for that in as many ways as I can. So, if killing me will undo all that pain of just one life I've destroyed, then so be it. Sim dropped his guard, hoping Teach would be wise enough to do the same. Teach stared at Thomas, his hands still trembling. He pulled the hammer back on the gun, ready to fire. Tears rolled down his cheeks. 
His aim was suddenly blocked by a red and white shirt standing firmly in his way. Teach wiped his tears away. Kyle stood between him and Thomas, seemingly unafraid and forgiving. Stop this, Teach, before you do something you regret. Your family isn't gone, man. You're right here. You're your family now. Allie listened to Kyle's words, feeling them carve a lasting impression into her heart. Sim walked over and stood next to Kyle with a fearless stare. Zip and Twig joined the two of them, forming a wall to protect Teach from his own mistake. Teach shook, the gun still pointed at his friends. He finally lowered his aim to the floor. His head fell. Kyle put his arm over Teach's shoulder and hugged him as the room remained quiet. Sim and Allie let out a sigh of relief. Well, I guess I never expected the boy who stole my daughter's heart would be the one to save my life, said Thomas. Kyle turned around and smiled at him with a look of acceptance. Allie released Gina from her arms and let her run over to Kyle. Kyle patted Teach on the shoulder. He embraced Gina in his arms and held her close. Kyle held her for a moment before letting her go. Thank you, young man, said Thomas, shaking his hand. Marcus looked at his father shaking the hand of his rival, expressing a sense of fury building up inside of him through his clenched fists. Marcus pushed his way through the group, baring his teeth. Give it. He reached down and pulled the gun from yeah. Teach's hand and aimed it at Kyle. The crowd screamed and backed away. Teach tried to grab the gun away from Marcus, only to be pushed aside by the bounding leap of a black and white canine. The dog planted his paws against Marcus's waist and toppled him off balance. Marcus fired wildly up at the ceiling as the gun flew from his hand. He stumbled trying to catch himself, before planting himself chest first into the food table next to him. The table rolled over as he fell to the floor. Allie rushed over to grab the dog by the scruff. Mashed potatoes were now smeared all across his face and suit, as he sat with his back against the fallen table. The androids hurried over to assist him. The dog pulled away from Allie to begin eating the lean roast and mashed potatoes that had spilled onto the floor. Marcus brushed the potatoes from his suit like a child throwing a tantrum. Thomas rolled toward Marcus. I saw the order you gave the helpers to burn down an abandoned shop earlier today before I came down. I didn't want to believe my son was using my own creations for such barbaric acts. But now I've seen it for myself firsthand. Take him away, said Thomas to the androids around the room. Allie regained her control of the dog as Teach walked over to Thomas. I'm sorry, Mr. McNeil. For everything... Uh, I have no excuse for my actions, said Teach. No, young man. Save your apologies. I know my life's work has proven to be a tragedy for many. In recent months, I've realized that this city needs a serious change. A change where machines and people work together. Not when they're outdated and replaced. As safe as it is to send an android in an officer's place... You can't replace an officer's natural instincts and intuition with a computer. So, we've begun a new training program for officers to take on android partners as they help maintain the peace. The program will create more jobs in the city again, helping those in the impoverished areas find work. That sounds like a good idea. Teach replied with a warm smile. As a matter of fact... I think we could use a few young men of your background in building that program. Assuming you all would be interested, of course. Having our newest officers be a shining example of what we aim to achieve would do the program all the more good. Teach looked at Kyle. Us? Work with the Tin Men? Asked Zip. Kyle gave Teach an excited and enthusiastic nod. Twig shot them a quick thumbs up. Zip rolled his eyes and nodded. I think that's a yes, Mr. McNeil replied Teach. Glad to hear it, said Thomas as he shook Teach's hand. Sim and Allie watched from the sidelines, both happy to see a happy ending to their latest journey. There was only one big problem left to solve, find their missing traveler. Sim looked down at his communicator. They only had four hours remaining and still had no idea where to start. He looked over at Allie, still smiling as she watched the lives of their new friends changing for the better. The dog broke free from her grip once more. It hurried over to the other end of the ballroom, 
where he sat down and wagged his tail in front of someone. A gray-haired man, the same man Ali had seen earlier when they first arrived. He was now dressed in a fine suit as another guest of the party. The man leaned down and began petting the dog behind the ears. Glad to see we at least helped one of two lost someones find their way home, said Ali. The man pet the dog as it basked in his attention. The man stood up and waved the dog over to Sim and Ali with one hand. The dog turned around and returned to Sim and Ali. The dog stopped and sat at Ali's feet, panting and waiting to be petted with a joyful look. Sim stared at the man from across the room. His face faded to white. A frightened shiver ran through him as his heart skipped a beat. Ali pet the dog on the head and looked over at Sim. She could see the pale expression on his face. Sam? Sam, she asked him. Are you okay? Allie looked over at the dog owner across the room. He stood with a satisfied grin on his face as he waved at both of them. Sim continued to stand in awe. He couldn't believe his eyes. A playful visage stood across the room from him. Erland? He mumbled. Allie looked at Sim, confused. She looked back over at the man. Her eyes grew wide. The man had a striking resemblance to the man framed in the picture on Sim's nightstand. You mean... the Erland? That's the Erland? Your teacher? They both stared at him in disbelief. Erland crossed his arms, laughing across the room to himself. A guest walked by and tapped him on the shoulder, then whispered something in his ear. Erland nodded and looked back at both of them. He pointed to the dog sitting at Sim and Allie's feet, then winked. He then turned around and disappeared into the crowd of guests. Isn't he... He is. Or so I thought. Replied Sim, still looking at where Erland had been standing. I can't explain it. Allie shook, trying to make sense of what she had just seen. The man of whom she had gathered by all accounts to be dead had just been standing across the room from them. You saw him though, right? With my own two eyes. Allie replied. The dog pawed at Allie's leg. They both continued to stare off into space as the dog tried to get Allie's attention. Either way, we still have to hurry and find the traveler so we can get out of here, said Allie. Sim looked at her. He glanced down at the dog sitting on the floor at her feet. The dog looked over at him, still panting, with a satisfied expression. I think the dog is the traveler. Allie looked at him, confused. What? How do you know? I don't, but if it can happen to people, I can't see why it couldn't happen to a dog, too. Are you sure? Sim reached down and petted the dog. He looked back over where Erland was. 100%. Teach walked over to Sim and Allie, both satisfied with finding their missing traveler, right under their nose the whole time. Guess I owe you again, said Teach, extending his hand for Sim to shake. No, this one was on me, replied Sim as he shook his hand. Gina told us how you didn't find your friend. I'm sure with Mr. McNeil's help, we could help you find them now. No, I think we already found him. She leaned over to pet the dog on the top of the head. Well, if you need anything, feel free to ask. The guys and I owe you for a lifetime. Thanks, Teach. Just stay out of trouble, all right? Same for you two, Kyle replied, walking over to say goodbye. He shook Sim and Allie's hand as Gina offered them both hugs. The party slowly returned to normal around them as the music played on. Allie and Sim turned around and began to walk toward the main entrance of the ballroom accompanied by their lost canine traveler. Hey! shouted Kyle with the others standing at his side. Sim and Allie turned back to them. Kyle wrapped his arm around Gina as he offered his words of wisdom. Hey, don't you guys forget, no matter how dark things get, there's always a glimmer of hope somewhere in the darkness. Sim and Allie smiled at him with warmed hearts. Hey there. This is Stephen Lester, the voice of Teach from Sim Adventures Across Time. If you've enjoyed your adventure across time so far, be sure to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash TSWheeland. With your support, 
you'll gain early access to the next chapter of the book and even a copy of the book itself. So no matter where or when you may find yourself, with your contribution, more thrilling and inspiring audiobooks can be made every day through the hard work, time, and dedication of voice actors and artists all across the world. From all of us here in the world between worlds, we'd like to thank you for joining us on our adventures.